Hello. Oh, do you hear that? Why? I believe that's the sound of the coding train pulling into the station. Hello. Good evening, afternoon, and welcome to another episode of The Coding Train with me, Dan Schiffman. Um, this is a YouTube channel where I make coding tutorials and a variety of other things. Actually, I don't do any other things. I only do the coding tutorials, I think. I don't know if tutorials is the right word. I try to be here uh, every week on Fridays, typically. I was here yesterday. I do a pretty terrible job at scheduling and keeping a consistent time. And maybe someday I'll get better at that because I hear, as a content creator, in this world that we live in in 2017, it is very important to have regularly scheduled content. <laughs> we'll get to that sometime. Okay, so um, today is actually a follow-up from yesterday. If you weren't here yesterday, the thing that I covered is something called linear regression. Uh, and today I'm gonna do linear regression. Again. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about these sound effects. Okay, so uh, yesterday I did something called linear regression. We're on this train. <laughs> We're on a train. We've got a destination. That destination is machine learning station. And uh, ultimately, I want to get to neural network based machine learning systems. And I'm going to build a neural network from scratch in probably JavaScript, but maybe in processing. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Um, on this channel. But I'm trying to do a bunch of tutorials to set up a foundation for making that easier. And linear regression, looking at linear regression from a statistical approach, and now looking at it with something called gradient descent. Gradient descent is a learning technique that is a fundamental piece of neural network-based machine learning systems. So today, we're really not, I, I'm, it's not my intention that what I'm going to show you will yield beautiful generative algorithmic artworks, but rather will demonstrate a particular technique that I'm going to apply again later, and also hopefully will give you a background for when you're reading blog posts or papers or books that involve uh, machine learning based systems, and those systems talk about gradient descent and derivative this and calculus that and partial derivative this and chain rule that. Um, this, hopefully today's session will give you kind of a background in that sort of stuff. Okay, so I'm looking here to see what's going on in the chats. Um, I can see, yep, there's a link, there we go. Uh, the rainbow on the t-shirt hasn't the same colors as the wallpaper. It should. Oh, oh yeah, it's different. This is a slightly different design. <laughs> um, now, if you're wondering, oh, look at that t-shirt. Where could I get one of those t-shirts like that? I want one. I don't know if that's what you're wondering. Uh, you can go to, I'm such a shill. Uh, I'm a sellout. Uh, codingtrain.storeenvy.com. Actually, I think the one that I've got here is, I, I ordered a sample of a color that I didn't make available. One thing that I'm discovering is the uh, lightweight, I don't know why I'm talking about t-shirts, but the lightweight t-shirts with the sort of, this is I think heather blue or something. I like those better. I don't know if, how you feel about them, but uh, anyway, you can, you can get your own t-shirt here. Okay, I can add more colors. I'll, I'll think about that another time, my own time. Um, okay, um, I heard a noise. It's, it's like Friday afternoon here. It's a holiday weekend here in the United States. I can't imagine that there's anybody roaming in the hallways and I will soon be on my way to enjoy a nice holiday weekend, hopefully. Before I do that, I have to torture myself by attempting to talk about gradient descent. Now, um, <laughs> calculus or something like that. So before I get started, I would like to read my what will now be my weekly quote. I did one yesterday. Every live session, I will read you a quote from this book in her own words. Uh, this, um, um, I mentioned this yesterday, but I'll mention it again. Uh, Red Burns was the founder of the Interactive Telecommunications Program. It's uh, where I teach at Tisch School of the Arts at NYU. Uh, she, was, she led the program for over 30 years. And in her first class that she used to teach called the Applications class, though and any, any, everybody just called it Red's class, uh, she had a slide presentation. So this book is a compilation of quotes from her slide presentation. I will read the one that I read yesterday so that you get the continuity. As you come together, depend on each other. That was yesterday's. And now today's is, 
You will find yourself wearing the ill-fitting clothes of someone else's world, dining on the strange food of someone else's thought. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's my Red Burns quote from today. Hopefully getting us in the mood, in the right frame of mind, in the relaxed, meditative state that is... <laughs> Time to do some coding. Calculus, linear algebra. Okay. Um, so, what's going to be for no sound? I just heard someone say no sound. I don't believe that. That's a one person saying no sound. Um, all right. So, and I'm just playing weird sounds for no reason at all. Um, oh, is somebody here at the coding train? Let me go over here and look and see who's at the door. Oh, there's nobody at the door. <laughs> but someday that would be great, right? If we had somebody at the door who would come in and say hi and then start talking about something, you're over there now. Okay, I'm gonna come back over here. I think I'm just gonna dive in. Um, dive in. You know what, I don't actually know how to dive. I know how to swim, uh, but I don't know how to dive and I think I should take lessons and learn to dive. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see how we're going to get started with this. Um, I am going to, first thing I'm going to do here is um, clean the whiteboard. I don't think that I need, I should have done this, clearly I should have done this in advance, but I did not. I'm trying to think, um, do I need any of this from yesterday? Um, Maybe I do. Maybe I'm not going to clean it just yet. And I will do that in the middle of the video. The first, so I think, I, what is it? This is, gonna, this is like a total world record for me. Seven minutes in, I'm going to start with the lesson. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you for somebody screenshotting that in case I need it. Uh, okay. Anders in the chat writes, finally, finally some proper math. So let me just make a good point here. Uh, I think if you said finally some math, you're on the, right, on the right track. There will be nothing proper about this whatsoever. I have to say that I am not, this is not something that I have a deep knowledge of. Um, this is not something that I consider myself an expert on. This is something that I've been learning and reading about and playing around with over the last few months. And so I'm gonna attempt to impart some perspective and attempt at this. And I, I have a feeling that there's gonna be a lot of stopping and starting and uh, hopefully some helpful suggestions and corrections <laughs> from the various chats that are going on here. Uh, oh, I didn't change the camera, thank you. Sorry, I have a bad, I think I probably should do the whole sensor thing that just knows where I am. Um, okay, so sorry about that. Um, what was I gonna say? So I'm gonna get corrections, blah, blah, blah. There's something else that I wanted to say. Wrong camera. Math is talking, camera, okay. You guys are all behind, I fixed it. I fixed it already. Okay, so. Let me go into session three. And linear regression. So this one is now, um, can I, if I raise this up, is that a problem? <laughs> Uh, linear regression, oh, I didn't publish any of the code from yesterday. Ordinary least squares and linear regression gradient descent. Um, and get a web browser. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot.
this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do do this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, never forget to this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song, never forget to this dot. Somebody composed that song for me. I'm just giving myself a little time to be silent for a second while I attempt to, okay, great. So I now have, this is the example from yesterday. Uh, <laughs> fidget spinner, trust me. I own, there's a lot of fidget spinners in my household right now. It's a, it's, it's a bit of a problem. Um, okay. Um, so this is what I did yesterday. This is the example from yesterday where I am fitting a line. Let's see if I move this over a little bit. Actually, that's fine. It's fine where it is. You can actually, oops, nope. We give ourselves more room here. Just trying to get everything set up. Uh, and uh, let's go to uh, gradient descent. We're going to redo this. So, ah, shoot. <laughs> Hold on, everyone. I'm just trying to get the code kind of ready. Um, I wonder if what I should do, I wonder if it would be useful for folks I forgot to upload the code from yesterday to GitHub. Let's see if I can manage to do that really quickly now, so if people want to get it. So github.com, coding train, rainbow code. Am I logged in? I'm logged in, that's a good sign. Um, this goes under nature of code, oh boy. Wow, I don't even, I need, I don't know where, I've got, by the way, anybody who wants to volunteer <laughs> to help me organize, uh, and rethink this GitHub repository, possibly turning it into, I don't know, a website <laughs> uh, where people can find listings of all the videos and all the code. I would welcome contributions and thought. There's a couple GitHub issue threads, people discussing that. That said, right now, I think that this code goes under nature of code because I think technically speaking, what, <laughs> what playlist am I in? Let's look at the numbering here. I think I need to make a new, I think I need to make a new uh, playlist. Let's see here. I'm sorry, I'm like wasting everybody's time here. Intelligence and learning session three. That's wh this is where I am. So the videos would be intelligence and learning three point something. All right, that's fine. Uh, we are going to, this is very confusing. Uh, how to do this, but I am going to go under courses and I'm going to, can I make a new folder right on GitHub? Create new file. Can I do this? Uh, intelligence learning readme dot, whoops, slash read, oh I can, readme, readme.md. Uh, code for in intelligence and learning tutorials. Uh, let's commit that file. Then, again, I might re redo this later, but now what I'm going to do is upload, and what I'm gonna do is grab from yesterday this Ordinary least Squares folder. And so now, oops, I need to hit commit. Sorry, I didn't hit commit. Uh, so close, so close, Ordinary least Squares. Um, and then I'm going to hit commit. It's amazing what you can do with Git and GitHub just using their website right now, you know. Okay, so if you want to get the code from yesterday to follow along with what I'm doing, uh, you would go to, um, to this GitHub repo under courses, under, ooh, I put it in the wrong place. I'll fix this later. <laughs> right now, it's right here in linear regression ordinary least squares. 
So I gotta number everything and put it in the right place, but at least it's there right now. You can go ahead and grab it. I probably should've just made it a gist, but I did it. Okay, um, so that's there. Now, what I wanna do is get this code, put it here. Remember when it was like seven minutes and I said I was about to start actually coding? <laughs> Great, okay. So we are going to do this now. Great. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I'm gonna mention a couple books. But, uh, I might mention these when I get, okay, so first of all, if you haven't watched, I know I say this every time, but if this is your first time watching me live, this is a live stream, everything that I do today will be edited, sometimes out of order, into a set of smaller video tutorials that will get uploaded later. So sometimes, unfortunately, there's a bit of redundancy. I'll talk something through and then say it again, but that's what's probably gonna happen. Um, these are two books uh, that I wanted to recommend. One is uh, Make Your Own Neural Network by Tariq Rashid. This has been helpful to me. It has a really nice appendix also in the back. Um, that's kind of like a little introduction to calculus. It's a little bit absurd to, you know, explain and talk about what calculus is in, you know, just like 10 to 20 pages. It's even more ridiculous to do that in, you know, two to three minutes of video that I might do. But this I would also recommend uh, for, um, for, for anybody, this is a book called Calculus Made Easy. Now, this book is actually from, uh, when is the original edition? I'm looking for it. Uh, originally published uh, in 1910. It had subsequent editions in 1914 and 1946. And this is a uh, update, revision, and uh, republication of it um, in from, I believe, 1998. And it's a really, it just has like all these like beautiful little diagrams in it. Maybe I can flip to a random page and do a little reading from it. Because it's, it's just so, I, let, let me find actually, the first chapter on differentiating is kind of nice. Uh, let's see what I can find here. Um, partial, okay, so partial differentiation is something that we need. Chapter three. I, I love the fact that, okay, let's, we're gonna read this. Chapter one <laughs> is titled, to deliver you from the preliminary terrors. Page 39. A little bedtime reading. I'm gonna read this to my children tonight at bedtime. Considering how many fools can calculate, it is surprising that it should be thought either a difficult, oh, of course the camera, of course the camera went off. <laughs> Oops. Now it's like you're not even in the right place. Boy, my little shtick was totally ruined there. I'm gonna try this again. Considering how many fools can calculate, it is surprising that it should be thought either a difficult or tedious task for any other fool to learn how to master the same tricks. So, oh, this is the prologue. I don't wanna read the prologue. I wanted to read, to deliver you from prelim. <laughs> Wait, I need some like ominous, uh, Bedtime music. Like, I don't have any. <laughs> okay. The preliminary terror, which chokes off most high school students from even attempting to learn how to calculate, can be abolished once and for all by simply stating what is the meaning in common sense terms of the two principal symbols that are used in calculating. The dreadful symbols are D, which really means a little bit of. Thus, DX means a little bit of X, or DU means Ordinary mathematicians think of it more polite to say an element of instead of a little bit of, just as you please. But you will find that these little bits or elements may be considered to be infinitely small. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Um, all right, so, oh, the other thing that's very exciting is, look at this. I developed this, like, massive technological leap forward in my live streaming capabilities yesterday when I discovered that I could use not one, but two whiteboard colors. And now I have purple and blue and green. So I'm hoping to make use of all these different markers today. And now, and now here we are. We are ready to begin. Let's, where's my water?
This is a very strange water that I'm drinking, because I did have some coffee in this mug earlier. And the coffee was all gone, but I didn't like completely rinse it out, and it just like fills it up with the water. There's like this faint air of eau de café. I guess it's café. Um, that's sort of still in here. Okay, it's 3:08 p.m. I have until <laughs> I have until. I would say I'm, I'm hoping to finish around 4.30 p.m., but I have a little 15 to 30 minute grace period if I need more time. But I, I'm pretty committed today to uh, getting through. This was my list from yesterday, and I did these two things. I'm gonna jump to four first. I think it's important for me to attempt to do this. I guess rip off the Band-Aid. I actually had a Band-Aid on earlier, <laughs> so it's already off. Rip off the Band-Aid and do uh, gradient descent. Okay. <sighs> Can you put the code on something like Dropbox instead of GitHub? I can't do that right now. I'm not sort of set up to do that, but I'm not opposed to doing something like that another time if that's helpful to people. Okay, I'm looking at the chat. I don't see anything too, I'm uh, the wrong camera again. Uh, this monitor that I have to keep track of where I am is really not, I think I need to put up a big one just up there in the wall where I'm looking straight ahead. If I look up right now, does it appear as if I'm looking at you or can you really tell that I'm looking up? Because here, now I'm really looking at you. Maybe if I look this like slightly above. Anyway, I'll figure this out later on my own time. Actually, I don't never in this room unless I hit the streaming button, so I have to figure everything out while I'm live. I don't know what is, uh, let's, let's get a nice, hold on. Let's get a nice little, uh, let's get a nice linear regression going here with some points. Kind of would like it to be more Angled. Okay, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, I know. I. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I better not look at the chat. Every once in a while, somebody writes a mean comment in the chat. I'm really just trying my best. <laughs> it is the internet, after all. Okay, uh, here we go. Hello, okay, so this is now another video in my series about linear regression. Now, why are you watching these videos? I'm not really sure, to be honest. But the, the topic here and the skills here, I hope, are laying a foundation for what I'm going to get to in future videos, which is building a neural network-based machine learning system. So, at the top of this video, why am I making another video about linear regression? So, what I did in the previous two videos is I created a P5JS sketch which implements linear regression using the ordinary least squares method, so a statistical approach. There are a whole bunch of data points in 2D space, and I try to fit a line that, that fits to that data as best as possible so that I could predict new data points in this space. And you can see as I start to click around how the line is fit sort of changes. Now, I also discussed a little bit of, well, does linear regression make sense based on your data? And these are big important questions in working in data science and machine learning. But right now we're just trying to focus on the techniques. Now one thing you'll notice is here as I refresh this page, I make, I click twice, I get a line instantly because I'm actually calculating the perfect, exact, best fit line according to the least squares method. But someday we will have a data set that's not two dimensional. Someday we will have a data set that has hundreds, that's a big data set, that's a many, many dimensional. And in this case, there isn't going to be an easy statistical approach that can just be done to fit, to, the, to create a model that fits the data perfectly with a single calculation. Uh, uh, okay, so this is, this is the problem that machine learning, neural network based, deep learning based systems are here to solve to figure out a way to create a model to fit a given data set. And one technique for doing that, which is different than, say, ordinary least squares, is to use a technique called gradient descent. And what gradient descent, descent essentially does, it says, let me make a guess. I'm just going to put the line here, and I'm going to see, how, how is that line good or not so good? Eh, it's not so good. Let me try shifting it a little closer to the data. Let me try shifting it a little closer to the data. Let me shift it. Let me shift it. So making lots of sm little small nudges and tweaks into what that line is doing. I think I have a better way of explaining that. So I'm going to come over here to the whiteboard. I'm going to do a little magic here, which is that I'm going to stand right over here. 
and I'm going to snap my fingers, and the moment I snap my fingers, the whiteboard behind me is going to be erased. Now, for all of you watching this live, that clearly didn't happen, but I'm setting up something, and I'm going to erase it. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to use this to explain something, but I realized that was unnecessary. So, I don't know. Talk amongst yourself for a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to uh, use this whiteboard cleaner. I guess I should play some music or something. I guess I could maybe get the uh, kitten song going. Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else is there? Yes, kittens. Thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. Notice that. Look what I get. I'm really losing my mind. OK, let's do it. to do? I need to, did I have a marker in my hand? I can't even remember. No, I didn't because I just walked over here. I was standing right about here. Wow, that was, that was, did that work? It works. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so um, let's, I'm going to make this same kind of diagram that I've made a few times now. And I'm going to, we're going to like really simplify it. So we have this idea of this two-dimensional space. There is some piece of data, we'll call it x, for example, the temperature that, the, that it is outside today. And we're trying to predict some outcome maybe based on that temperature. Uh, yesterday we talked, uh, we'll call that y, we talked about that of the um, uh, sales of ice cream. I saw actually a data set that was interesting about like the frequency at which uh, crickets chirp according to the temperature outside. Um, that's a data set you can find online somewhere and use. Um, so we have this idea and maybe there's some existing data points based on uh, ice cream store that we have studied uh, and I can graph that data. So the idea here is that we have our machine learning recipe. We are going to take, I'm, I know I'm out of the frame here, we are going to take one of our inputs called X, feed it into the machine learning recipe, and the machine learning recipe is going to give us a prediction Y. So we have known data, and we can, if we had new input data, we could make a guess. <sighs> Take a good break for a second. Is this where I want to be going here? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm um, just thinking about this for a second. Hydrate. Someone gave me that. I knew the camera was about to shut off. What is life going to be like someday if the cameras don't shut off after 30 minutes in my life? I don't think I'll be able to function. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I feel like I'm off here in where the camera view is. Let's see if I can turn it a little bit this way. Because I like to be able to stand more over here. Okay, great. This is better now. Okay. Okay. So yesterday, my machine learning recipe was the ordinary least squares method, meaning I was able to do a statistical analysis of all of this data and create the line of best fit. And then if I had a new input, you know, x value of such and such, 
I could look up its corresponding spot on the line, and that would be the Y output. This is a function. The machine learning recipe is essentially uh, uh, solving for M and B in the equation of a line. So that's what I did yesterday. Today's technique, I want to demonstrate the technique known as gradient descent. So the idea of gradient descent is, OK, so boy. So much to say. Where can I, where should I start? Where should I end? I really have no idea. So one thing I'll mention is that the maths required for gradient descent typically involve calculus and they involve uh, two concepts from calculus, one called a partial derivative, which if you don't know calculus or what a derivative is, well, how can you be expected to know what a partial derivative is, as well as a, uh, uh, um, something called the chain rule. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through this entire system and how it works and explain it without diving deeper into the maths. Um, um, but I will, um, I'm going to make a follow-up video where I discuss some of those, those pieces in a bit more detail. So, so, okay, so, but here's a way that you could think about gradient descent that's related to stuff that I have done in previous videos and in my book, Nature of Code, where I reference uh, the work of Craig Reynolds' steering behaviors. So think about this for a second. This is, this is great. Let's say you have a two-dimensional space and you have a vehicle that is moving around, an agent that is moving around this space. And the vehicle has a particular velocity expressed as a vector or an arrow in this case. Now, what if the goal of this vehicle is to reach this target? Well, we could say that this vehicle has a desired velocity. Its desired velocity is to move at maximum speed from its current location to towards the target. So this is a vector, which is its desired velocity. And if you and you can think about the difference, like the its current, the, this vehicle's current velocity is like its guess. I don't know where I should go. I'm going to try going this way. Oh, but really, I should go this way. Well, if I'm going this way, but I really should go this way, what if I just turn a little bit towards the target? What if I were to just steer a little bit in that direction? And this is what gradient descent does. You can think of desired as the known output, the correct output. What if I feed in one of these data points, right? And I say, uh, look at this particular x, y pair. Let me feed it in. Let me try to get a guess, which is sometimes I think written as y a tick, I think. But I'm going to say, what if I get a y, I'm going to say y guess. The error is the difference between what I guessed it would be minus what it actually should be. Right? If I start with an xy pair, this is the error. And you'll notice if you look at Craig Reynolds' steering behaviors and all of these animated systems that, I've, that I implemented from that work, you'll see there's a formula in it. Steering equals desired minus velocity. So you know, I put, I put it get, uh, you know, I kind of did it the reverse here because this is really the equivalent of desired. But the point is the difference between the way that I should go and the way that I am going. That's the error. The difference between what my machine learning recipe, what my model currently thinks the output should be, compared to the known output, that is the error. And steering, if I adjust my velocity, if I steer towards the desired, I'm going to get a better model. I'm going to move towards the target. If I use this error to tweak the parameters of the machine learning recipe, I'm going to make my model. I'm going to have better M and B values for the next time. And I could do this over and over and over and over again. And this is, we've been talking about this, supervised learning. I can take the known data, send it in, get a guess, look at the error, tweak the knobs, send the next data point in, get a guess, look at the error, tweak the knobs. I can do this over and over and over again. And I can just start with random values for M and B. So I don't know what it'd be. I'm going to just put a line here, and then I can start moving the line around according to the error as I go through all the data. So this is what we're trying to do. 
Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second and see if uh, see uh, if anybody's got any comments or anything in the chat they want to like mention any corrections. Then I'm gonna move on. So I think what I want to do next, I think I'm gonna start just adjusting the code. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, all right, so change camera. Oh, Siraj is watching. Oh no, <laughs> don't, don't watch, it's gonna be all be wrong. You know, I'm gonna delete this from the internet. <laughs> we square the difference as well to keep it positive and preserve the magnitude. Ah, some of the squared errors. Yes, this is a good point. So I should mention this. Okay, so actually, uh, good point. Thank you. Oh. Thank the internet. Thank, uh, that's my thank you sound. Thank you, Siraj. Uh, you guys should watch Siraj's channel, especially for all of you who are like, how come you're not doing Python? You should do the Python. Python, Python, where's my Python? Someday, but go watch Siraj's channel. Lots of Python there. Um, so I for neglected to mention something which is important, especially once you start getting into the math. I don't know if I, I like to say maths, but now I worry that I'm, I said this yesterday, that I'm sounding pretentious. It's a bit of a problem. Okay, so wait, I'm going to come back into my tutorial. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Um, so I should mention about, right, because I should mention about squaring the error. The thing about it is, yeah. Actually, I don't, I, I'm gonna come back to that later because when I do the follow-up, I'm gonna, so there's something else that I need to mention, which is that there's stochastic gradient descent and um, um, uh, batch gradient descent. So I could adjust the knobs, so to speak, for each data point one at a time, or I could process all the data, look at the sort of collective error, and then adjust the knobs. I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do here. I should probably go look at the chat again. Um, but I, I think I'm gonna come back to the squaring of this when I dive deeper into it. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. Um, all right, uh, let's see here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go, because what I'm gonna do is I'm, um, yeah, there's, because there's the whole, right, there's the whole error graph thing and square, you know, you change this parameter, how does it look at the slope? But I think I'm gonna come back to that. I think I'm gonna leave that out of this sort of initial pass. Where's my eraser? I'm not sure. I'm very unsure about this. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dive in and start programming it. And then I'll come back and maybe follow up with looking at sort of like a graph of the error and talking about slope. Because I think I'm going to save the derivative stuff for like a follow up to if people want to go a little further into it. <laughs> Everybody okay with this plan? <laughs> not so sure about it. Okay. Anyway, so now I'm back. Thank you for the, uh, thank you to Mathieu who uh, helps to edit a lot of this stuff after the fact. So I'm gonna pretend, I'm gonna, pretend, I'm gonna walk back and start adding some of this stuff to the code. Okay, so there's more to how the math behind this stuff works and how we look at the overall error and there's some stuff that involves the derivative and um, the slope of the graph of the error. And I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna come back to some of that stuff in a second video where I go a bit further into some of the math here. But what I'm actually gonna do is just start showing you how to set up to do gradient descent in the code itself. So let me come over here. So this, uh, as you saw before, this is the example from yesterday that's using the ordinary uh, least squares method. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to, um, uh, this, so I had this function linear regression, and this linear regression function calculates the slope of the line and the y-intercept, m and b, according to ordinary least squares. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to completely get rid of this. So now, <laughs> nothing happens there. 
So I can click, and the first guess of the line, I just plugged in some values. Now, typically speaking, I think what's probably typically done is these values are initialized at zero. These are like weights, so to speak, and ultimately you're gonna see these are analogous to the weights of connections in a neural network. But this M and B values, I could start with them randomly, I could pick something and hard code it, I could get, let them both be zero. I think I'm gonna stick with actually one comma zero just to sort of see, because then at least I can see that the line is there. So now what I want to do is I wanna look at, with the existing data points, I wanna look at the error, and I want to adjust M and B in the direction of the error. So let's see how that goes. So I'm gonna call this now gradient uh, descent. Uh, and so in the draw function, I think I wanna call this now gradient descent. I hear a noise in the hallway. Who may it be? I, I won't go over there to check because I'm in the middle of making a video tutorial. <laughs> okay, um, it's just very distracting. Gradient descent. I'm a person in a world, in a world where I'm programming linear regression with gradient descent. I've lost my mind. This is gonna get edited out. I have to go away now. Oh, I hurt my knee also, so I can't really bend it. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I'm back. I had a little digression there that I had to edit out. Thanks for, uh, ah, thanks for tuning in. Okay, so um, where I am is that I'm changing the name of the function to gradient descent. And what I want to do is I'm going to just look through all of the data. So let's just first look through all the data. And, okay, so for each data set, I have the y is data index i dot y. So we can get the x and the y. Then I can actually calculate a guess. So my guess is m times x plus b, right? This is my machine learning recipe. I am taking the input data x, I am multiplying it by m, I am adding b, and that is my guess. So now my error equals, um, my error equals y minus the guess. And I think, technically speaking, I think I should be saying guess minus y. Now, you'll, you, you may recall that in the ordinary least squares method, I would always square the error because I want to get rid of the sort of positive or negative aspect of it. In this case, and uh, again, I'm going to go a little further into this in the next video, I actually want the positive or negative direction of the error because I want to know which way, <laughs> in essence, to tune the m and b values to get a better result. Um, so the issue here is now, and this is what's known as stochastic gradient descent. So I want to make an for every single data point that's available, I want to make a change to m and b. So I need to calculate how should I change m and how should I change b. So really what I'm saying is uh, m equals m plus some amount of change, b equals b plus some amount of change. And we can, in this case, kind of say, this is a, one way to think about it and understand it, I have this error. Who's responsible? Who is to blame here? Is it UM? Is it UB? Who, who's in charge here? What's, the, what's going on? Um, I gotta figure this out. So in essence, we could say, if I adjust those values according to the error, maybe if I tried it again, I would get a better result. And in this case, B can be adjusted directly by the error because it's just the y-intercept. Should I move it up or down? And M, which is the slope, can be adjusted by the error, but uh, according, to, according to also the input value itself. Um, so this is how you can kind of intuitively understand it. I want to adjust those values according to the error. The slope also relates to what the input actually was, the y-intercept, just the error itself. Now, so I I'm missing a whole bunch of steps and a, bit, a few pieces of explanation here, but let's just run this and see what happens. So first I always have to click, okay, oh, first of all I got an error. <laughs> Uncaught reference error, n is not defined in gradient descent. Where did I have n? Oh, b equals b plus error. Yeah, I don't know what n is. So you can see like, okay, well, I don't know where that line went. It was there for a second, and then it just went far away. So here's the thing. If I come back to my analogy from the steering, 
One of the things in the steering behavior examples from Nature of Code, Craig Reynolds examples, is that there was a variable called maximum force. I don't know if you can see that, maximum force. Because one thing you might think about it here is like, well, how powerful, I know what the error is between the way I'm going and where I want to go. How powerful is my ability to turn? Well, maybe I'm able to turn at like inf with infinite power. And that could be good, but not so good. Because if I try to like push myself, I might end up going all the way down this way. And then I'm like, oh my god, I'm going in the wrong direction. And then I end up going all the way up in the other direction. Maybe I just only want, really want to be able to make little adjustments. Because it's the wrong way, I want to just make a slight adjustment. I don't want to overshoot the target. This target being, I want to find the parameters, I want to find the weights, the M and B values to minimize the error. So, um, so I, I, I don't want to overshoot what that, um, minim, that, that optimal value is. And so that is where a variable, sometimes called alpha, but most commonly called learning rate comes in. So I could have a variable called learning rate, and usually this is a small number, something to really reduce the size of that error. So in this case, I would say, well, let me take this change in the value of the slope and multiply it by the learning rate. And let me change, take this for b and multiply it by the learning rate. Okay, so now if I, I'm going to try this again with a learning rate of 0 0.001. Hey, that doesn't look right. <laughs> Come back to me. Okay, so let's think about what might be wrong. The problem is I, this, this is my like music for sitting here and thinking. And then I just decide like I'm doing my shtick and like, and then I don't think, I'm like often thinking about what I'm gonna have for dinner later or like, is it gonna rain tomorrow and I'm gonna have time to go jogging or you know, uh, what should I, which chapter of Harry Potter am I on again? I know I'm a little bit behind. Um, okay. So uh, I was also waiting for somebody in the chat to give me the correction. And I, uh, most likely I have a positive or negative problem here, which is that I probably am moving in the wrong direction. So whenever that happens, you know, I could just switch one of these to minus. Uh, I could also just say, uh, oh yeah, and actually, over here, I wrote guess minus y. And that's really what I, oh, that's what I wrote here. No, I want y minus guess. I knew it was always the same. Th so hopefully you're not watching this. <laughs> but in this case here, right, steering, if I want to move towards the target, the error is the desired, the known result minus the velocity. And so this should really be, if I want to move in that direction, y minus y guess. Uh, and so let me come back over here, and I'm going to do that. And, ah, camera went off. <laughs> do over. Okay. Let me come back over here. and. Let me change that to, oh, I changed it already. Wait, how did I do that? Okay, I must have done that before, then I went to explain it. So let's try this. Yeah. Looks pretty good, right? Now, here's the thing. Let's start, let's start with m at zero, because that was a little bit weird what just happened there. So over time, something is definitely wrong here. Uh, and it might just be that my learning rate uh, isn't good. Let's try a little bit of a... Uh, we'll have to think about this. <laughs> now why? This is better now. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come back. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'm doing this right. It's really about the learning rate here, I guess. Uh, like if I click here, I'm gonna, that line's going to stay, and if I click here, yeah. Okay, well, hold on. So let me go back to this. Thank you, Mathieu. I, this one's definitely going to need to be aggressively <laughs> edited. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go here. So, okay. So let me, let, I, let me put M and B back to zero. Let me put M and B back to zero. Hit refresh here. And so let's see. Um, so we can see, interestingly enough, this isn't the cor correct line. 
because the line should really go through those two points. You know, I think I've got an issue here with the learning rate. So you can see how it was kind of like moving to the right spot, but then it's still making very, very small, small changes. I only have two points, it's not a lot of data, it's not a lot of time for it to change. I probably just need kind of a larger, a higher learning rate here just for this demonstration. Let's make it at 0.05. And we can see now it's kind of moving much more quickly and it's starting to turn, <laughs> albeit very slowly, but you can see as it's slowly, slowly turning, approaching the correct, the correct or the optimal spot for this line. And as you can see, if I were to click again and click again, try to um, you know, click a lot up here and a lot down here, um, ultimately, eventually, I should start getting the line of best fit. Now, um, so there are, you know, there's some strategies. Now, in theory, you shouldn't really need to adjust the learning rate over time, but there is a technique in a lot of machine learning systems that you will say, see that you can, called annealing, I think that's the right word, where you kind of start with a high learning rate and then slowly over time uh, reduce it. So you can kind of get some big corrections at the beginning and then find some, some smaller corrections. So, um, but pause here for a second. Uh, Error equals, I'm, I'm looking at the chat uh, um, to see if I'm missing anything. Because this, I, you know, I think simulated. Um, yeah, I, I have a feeling this is going to perform much better once I do the um, stochastic, uh, oh no, sorry, the batch gradient descent. There's probably an issue with, let me see my, I have some examples already pre-baked. Let me see how those. Uh, let me just make sure to see if there's anything I'm really missing here. Um, um, so this was my example that I made Yeah, this is kind of the same, interestingly enough. So this looks similar to what I just demonstrated right now, right? It's behaving the same way. Uh, let me look at what values I used in this particular example. Uh, where is this? These are the examples from my course from a while ago. Um, why did that not open correctly? That's annoying. There we go. Uh, so let me go into this code. I just want to compare this code before I come back into the actual video. Oh, I had like a learning rate slider. Um, so this is, is this doing the batch right now? Sorry, this is hard to see. Um, yeah, so this is actually doing the batch. Uh, delta B, yeah, Y minus Y guess, plus equals delta B. So this is a different example, which I'm gonna do next. Um, the bigger the error, the bigger the learning rate, yeah. Well, um, okay, so, wait, uh, Put two dots right above each other, I'm coding along and it's not adjusting. Let's try that. So, so you mean if I do this? Yeah, that's not good. Uh, so let's, so hold on, let me go, let me close this. I just wanna make sure my example that I made previously didn't do anything, so let's give it a very high learning rate. Whoa. <laughs> I'm just sort of seeing what it's gonna do here. We got it close enough. 
Um, okay. The, the thing about this is I'm less concerned about um, uh, you know there I'm less cons here's the thing I'm not looking in this particular example to demonstrate the optimal way to fit a line to 2D data <laughs> I just want to look at the idea of linear regression with a statistical approach and with gradient descent to set a foundation of knowledge for what I'm going to do in future videos. So, um, uh, oh wait, collinearity is bad for regression anyway. So there you go, it shouldn't work. <laughs> like, we, that, that's not a, that's not a, uh, um, yeah, so that's, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Okay, so where am I, where was I in this tutorial? I was kind of like checking, I think I talked about the learning rate, and I changed it to 0.5, and I was kind of done. Okay. Um, okay, so some folks in the chat were asking about like, okay, well it's sort of performing weirdly if I put a lot of like points above and below, but if I put, you know, points to the um, right and left, it's kind of, it fits the line very nicely. Um, you can see, like, now I'm doing above and below again. So here's the thing, um, collinearity, meaning like a lot of vertical points is not really good. This, this isn't really, this data doesn't really make sense for linear regression if I was trying to make predictions. So we're not necessarily gonna get a good line. And part of what I'm doing again is not to demonstrate the optimal way to do linear regression, but to demonstrate the technique known as grading, the set descent of making small adjustments to weights, to parameters, to the slope and y-intercept based on an error, based on the supervised learning process. So this is a start to that. Um, you could stop here, and <laughs> I highly recommend that you do, because what I'm gonna do in the next video, I don't really know how that's gonna go, to be honest. Um, but I'm gonna try to look a little bit more closely as to why this works out the way that it works. How do I know how to change M and B how do I know exactly how to change M and B to minimize the error? I said kind of, well, the error kind of gives us the direction in which to change. This has to do with calculus. It has to do with comparing how changing one variable affects another variable. So if I change M, how does that change the error? And can I look at the slope of, of a graph, perhaps, to see how to move along that graph to minimize that error. So this is what I'm gonna cover a bit more in the next video. I'm not gonna really, I'm gonna actually also change, this is, I said, I think I said this, stochastic gradient descent, meaning I'm adjusting the weights, I'm adjusting the M and B values with every data point, but I could also look at the sort of error in totality and then adjust the weights all at once at the end of one cycle through all of the data, and that's known as batch gradient descent. So I'm going to do, I'm go, what I'm gonna do is explain a bit more about the math here, and then I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna change the code to batch gradient descent in the next video. It might be many parts, to be honest with you, but I don't know how it's gonna go. Maybe this video is not gonna exist, the next one. You can look, see if it's there, because I don't know if I should really make it. Okay, see you soon, thanks for watching this. Okay. Um, yeah, Alpha writes in the chat, um, uh, I'm just learning how to program, so all of these videos are kind of overwhelming. I do apologize. I'm kind of on this, you know, I wanted to make a set of videos um, that go along with a bunch of topics for this course that I taught this semester. Some of them are not as useful, perhaps not as useful or as exciting or as just sort of playful as some of the other stuff that I've done in terms of making games or generative algorithms. And some of them also do require a depth of knowledge or experience with certain coding topics that are beyond what um, some of you who are watching are if you're beginners and new to code. So I don't know how to best um, handle this. What I'm hoping to do this summer is kind of like take a week off from machine learning and go back to just some simpler, more creative projects and then go back to machine learning. So we'll see what I do next week, but feedback, thoughts, suggestions, all that is quite um, welcome. Okay, please do something with the sound to be a bit louder. Um, so hopefully, I don't know. So first of all, they, so how was that? So let me do a little uh, inquiry here, a little poll. <laughs> I could do a straw poll really quick. Uh, I'm just gonna, uh, informal anecdotal poll. Um, 
If you're watching this and had never learned about gradient descent before, did that make sense? Was this helpful? Or maybe you learned about it before. Did this add something? I'm just, I don't know. I guess I'm looking for a little feedback here. Uh, um, okay. Um, so I'm going to think about how much time I have left today. Those needless parentheses make me uncomfortable. I totally agree. These parentheses are awful. All, I, I should get rid of them. I'm going to get rid of them now. Um, okay. Thank you, uh, Mike in the chat who writes, it was helpful. Learned something new, helpful. Okay, good. <laughs> Dominique's asked, could you get this th into 3D and teach a bit about quaternions? Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so now what I'm going to attempt to do is talk about, let's, let's, let's make a plan for this, everybody. So here are the things. I need to know what calculus is. <laughs> I need to know what a derivative is. I need to know what uh, the chain rule is and what a partial derivative is. <laughs> Should I try making videos on that stuff? And then with all those pieces, we can actually uh, like sort of derive this formula. <laughs> Why not, right? Okay, so I think I need to erase this whiteboard. This is a terrible idea. I should have left it where it was. And I should just say, I'll put links, links in the video's description <laughs> to uh, more detail about the math behind getting those values. Now, let's, let's try it. I, let's try it. What's a, what's a succinct way to say, actually, this is a good metaphor. Uh, maybe metaphor is not the right or analogy here to look, think about a, something uh, move, like a runner or a car moving sort of speed, position, um, to think about that as a, uh, um, as kind of a foundation for the, what a derivative is and um, what calculus is. <laughs> calculus, I, I think, right? Couldn't I say that it's the study of how changing one variable affects another variable? Or is that actually too narrow because that's really only thinking about derivative as opposed to integration, but integration just being the inverse there. Um, th oh, three blue, one brown. That is a great, um, that is a great, um, uh, that's a great YouTube channel. Actually, I, I watched some of those videos. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so, um, here we go. Where's my uh, calculus book? <laughs> In the chat, uh, uh, Jim writes, got a calculus exam next week. Would very much enjoy you teaching it. Oh boy, this is not going to help. I am, I'm, not, I'm not qualified to help anybody with their calculus exam. Uh, I think you don't have to do this video about calculus. Could we get three blue, one brown for a guest tutorial? That would be great. Somebody maybe uh, put that out into the universe on Twitter or something. Maybe we can make that happen. Um, OK. Um, all right. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, against my better judgment, um, I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about calculus. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> Chapter three. <laughs> just don't, bear, don't mind me. I'm just going to be reading this book. <laughs> Chapter 
three. Chapter one. Wait, no, no, I want chapter three. Chapter two. I love this book is so nice. Hmm. Constants and variables. Fixed value called constants. Variable. Okay. 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 All right. 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 Here we go. All right. Here we go. Uh, okay. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Are you watching this video? If you are, please turn off your computer and go to something else. This is going to be a problem. Because I'm going to do something I have no way qualified to do, but I just did a set of tutorials about linear regression, one using ordinary least squares method, which is a statistical approach, another using a technique known as gradient descent, which I hear, <laughs> I've been told, behind the scenes uses something called calculus. Um, this is a, a book that I really do love called Calculus Made Easy. It's from 1910. Uh, this is a reprint of it. It has a nice foreword uh, by Martin Gardner. Um, and um, uh, I, recommend, I recommend this book. I've been reading it. It's, been, uh, delight. it's a delight. It has wonderful little drawings in it. And it's, it's completely absurd that I might even attempt to say that, oh, I'm going to make a 5, 15, 20, 30 minute video and I'm going to explain calculus or something like that. So I'm going to kind of narrow my focus and talk in generalities and then in some specifics um, and try to give you a sense of uh, the, the aspects of calculus, which by the way, calculus, calculate, those words are similar, doesn't need to be some scary weird thing oh, that I couldn't possibly ever do, um, and how it relates uh, for any of you who are interested in a bit more behind the scenes for this linear regression graded descent stuff. But really, I don't know. Am I ever going to use this again in any of my other videos? Are you going to use this? I don't know. Maybe it'll be interesting. Maybe um, you should go practice piano, which is a lovely thing to do if you play the piano, I guess. If you don't, maybe you should take lessons. Okay, um, so let's think about this. So I'm going to start with, um, I th here's, so I have a lot of videos, and I think this is actually a good place to start from, that deal with motion and animation. So let's think about motion on a compute, in a computer window. I might draw an ellipse, and that ellipse would have a given x, y value. But let's just simplify our world for a moment and think about only, by the way, I have no plan for what I'm doing, <laughs> just waiting for this, just in case you're wondering. It's look, because it kind of sounds like I have a plan. I don't have a plan. Uh, let's think, let's simplify this. Um, and think of just as it only has an x value. So this circle is going to move each time through a draw loop, each frame of animation, x is going to change. So I could, if I wanted to, create some sort of graph where the x-axis, and now don't get confused here, there's an x point, there's an xy plane here, now I'm creating a graph with an xy, this is confusing. So let's adjust this a little bit, I'm looking for an eraser. To make this, see, you can see now that I don't have a plan. Um, let's actually just call this, um, let's pretend this is, uh, forget about the computer window, that this is a runner. I can't draw. i wearing a hat for some apparent reason. Uh, and this runner starts at zero meters and is going to move uh, along this bottom of this place where this runner is running. So now, this is going to be a graph where the y-axis is distance and the x-axis is time. This is going to relate to calculus, I think. Okay, so uh, at the first moment in time, the runner is at a distance of zero. Then one second later, the runner is at one meter. And two seconds later, the runner is at two meters. And three seconds later, the runner is at three meters. So I could say this is a graph of the runner's distance as it relates to time. And calculus, or at least uh, uh, calculus and a key aspect of calculus known as the derivative, often written as, for example, d, oh, this is bad because this is called distance. Hmm, can I make this x? Let's make this x. So we're going to think I'm graphing x as it relates to time. And so this is the x-axis up here. I might write 
dx over dt. Calculus is the study, part of calculus is the study of how one variable changes when another variable changes. As time goes forward, how does x change? How does x change according to how time changes? Now, this is relevant because what I did in the previous video, and I'm going to want to like tie this together, right? this isn't just a general video, is I was looking at how does the error change when I change the parameter of a machine, one of my, in my machine learning system, right? So what, how does d error change relative to d weight? If I change a weight, what does that do to the error? So if I can learn about how to study how certain variables affect other variables, I can apply that to a machine learning system where I want to change weights to minimize the error. Okay. So this graph being a graph of x as it relates to time, we could actually, we could write this as a function. So time, oh, sorry, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm taking a time out for a second. I don't, I've got this like, I don't love that I called this x and this is the y-axis. I'm going to look in the chat, see if anybody has any helpful suggestions to me. Uh, make distance s for displacement. That's a good idea. Okay, hold on. I think he started wrong not talking about how derivative could be explained concretely. Uh, that was the last, con oh, I'm in the wrong frame. I'm very, <laughs> I'm looking at the chat, waiting for some really key piece of information that I want to, oh, it's four o'clock already. I got to keep moving here. Um, all right, so I'm not seeing anybody, um, I'm, not seeing, uh, I'm not seeing anybody shouting at me and that I've done anything. Ah, uh, yeah, so, okay, so I'm gonna get into, uh, okay, um, hold on, I need some more water here. You gotta stay hydrated, especially if you're gonna attempt to talk about calculus. Wouldn't it be, maybe I should look at the uh, Wikipedia page for calculus, that might help me. <laughs> Keep going. It's you that we're here to see, okay? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna keep going now. Um, okay. Okay, so I kinda, I don't love what I've done here. <laughs> because I'm, you know, mixing all my axes and variables. So I'm now going to simplify, I'm going to change this up again one more time. And I'm going to consider the runner's distance as the y value and time as the x value. Whoa, hold on a second, time out. Did I write this correctly? Hold on. If this was x and this was t, and let's um, let's say that these are uh, 10, 20, oh, hold on. Is this what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about dt over, yeah, 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 yeah. dy over d, because if I change it, then I would have dy over dx. <sighs> I'm losing my mind here because what I what I want to get into the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about acceleration, and then I'm going to look at like an exponential curve. I, I lost my train of thought here. It's right. Okay, I'm right. Okay. Yeah, I kind of f of x would be a good way of doing this. Uh, that's right, I'm going to leave this. It's fine. It's fine that the axes are kind of screwy. Um, I'm just going to leave it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, actually, I wanna, what I want to do here is I, I want to change the units a little bit because I think this will make it a little bit more interesting. So, let's say that at one second, so let, let me, oh, sorry, I lost my eraser. Let's actually change this a little bit. So, let's, uh, I'm going to uh, try to actually get some units of measurement here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So let's say that 
the runner is running two meters per second, right? Dx dt. Now, I, two meters per second. This is I'm, I'm kind of leading, lead, objection leading the witness here. But so at one second, the runner is at two meters. At two seconds, the runner is at four. At three seconds, the runner is at six. So this is what the graph is going to look like. That I get. I can't tell. Uh, it should. It should actually look like it's point. I, my scale is off. But you'll see the idea here. So what is the formula? The formula for this line is x equals 2 times t. I can always determine what the position of the runner is according to what time. So at 10 seconds, the runner's at 20 meters. At 100 seconds, the runner is at 200 meters. So in this case, the change in x relative to the change in time is 2. And it is that for any single point, it is always that value. Now here's the thing. What if the runner is not running at a constant speed? What if the velocity changes over time as well? So one of the things, if you watch my other videos about motion and animation, you'll see that, okay, velocity describes the rate of change for position. So velocity is essentially the derivative of position acceleration being the rate of change describes how velocity changes over time. And so that's why, by the way, when you look at a physics engine, they'll often be, oh, I'm using some integration technique. I might be using something called Euler integration or Verlet, Verlet, Verlet integration, Verlet integration. That's because what happens in a physics engine is I start with an object's acceleration and I want to then look at the velocity based on that, and then look at the position based on that. So I'm going in the reverse. So integration being the reverse of the derivative. But in, this, in our case, for what we're looking to do in terms of figuring out how to minimize the error according to different weights that are changing, derivative is the key word here. So if this is the function, and really x is a function of t, the change in x relative to the change in time, the derivative of this is 2. Always 2. The rate of change as t changes um, for every, as t, this is, <laughs> okay, da, 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 nothing wrong, 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 I was looking at the chat, okay. Essence of calculus, YouTube. Boy, I should just Forget about all of these. Uh, I shouldn't be making my own video here. There's so many better videos on YouTube about this. I, I think I gave enough disclaimers at the beginning. <laughs> okay. The derivative, the uh, x, the x changes. Uh, the camera just went off over there. Let me fix that. Okay, how x changes relative to time that is 2. Okay, so now, here's the thing. This is a very unrealistic scenario. Nothing is going to move at a perfect constant velocity. But, so let's just, let's come up with a simpler, let's come up with another scenario. What if the graph of the runner's position over time looks something like this? So this might look familiar to you, this parabola, this exponential curve. Uh, you know, I tried to approximate a drawing of something like y equals x squared. So again, I've kind of un unfortunately named all my <laughs> variables in a pretty terrible way here. But let's look at this. So let's try to understand what does, how do I calculate? So I'm going to come back over here and say, In this case, maybe x equals t squared. The position of the runner as relates to time is the number of seconds squared. So in this case, the runner is accelerating at, uh, at zero. So if, you know, at, at zero seconds, the runner's at zero. At one second, the runner is at one. At two seconds, the runner is suddenly at four. 
at three seconds, the runner is suddenly at nine. So the runner is speeding up as, the, as, as it's running. So in this case, how do I know how x changes according to time? So let's take a look. The, I don't want to be. I don't want to be here. I, I want to run away and hide now. I got, got. I went down this path, and I'm thinking about this. I'm gonna just keep going. It's fine. Okay. You can edit that out in case you're wondering. I mean, you can. It'll be on the internet forever. Um, okay. So let's look at. Let's look at a given moment in time. Let's say over here. So this is. I don't remember where I am. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six seconds. So at six seconds, the runner, and I obviously I didn't draw this correctly for this exact graph, but at six seconds, we know the runner is at, <laughs> not trying to scale, would be at uh, 36 meters. This is a very fast runner, I guess. 36 meters in six seconds, is that realistic? I don't think so. Um, okay, so now we could kind of, what we can do is I could say like, I could sort of look at this and say, well, what if I changed time by two seconds? Where would the runner be? Well, the runner would be then uh, at eight seconds, the runner would be at 64. The runner would be at 64 meters if I changed time by two seconds. So in this sense, I can have, I can, I can say that what, what happened here? I changed by two seconds and did this, I'm, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about how, how do I want to describe this? Uh, uh, <laughs> where's my Muzak <laughs> when I need it? But, but, but maybe I need to hydrate. Is it really necessary to explain high school math? <laughs> uh, um, I'm, I'm reading this chat. This is fascinating. I think I just got to speed this along here. I, I, I actually am going, the thing is I want, I'm going further into this than I intended. Um, and so, uh, let's speed this along here. So, how much did it change by? Okay, so I could say, okay, sorry. So I could kind of, so I could ask the question, when I changed by two seconds, how much did distance change? And you know, 64 minus 36 is 28. Is that right? I think it's 28, right? Um, so it changed by 28. Uh, I don't know. This is. Th does this make sense? Well, the the thing is, <laughs> I went way too far out here. The 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 the, the point of uh, what I'm doing here is that uh, <laughs> banging my head against the wall. This is also, I should recommend, <laughs> I, should, <laughs> I can't believe people are watching this. Uh, but I, I, the whole, you, you must have all turned this off. This is also a nice book because it, has, uh, it actually has a kind of explanation that's very similar to what I'm talking about here in terms of incline and extent um, and slope. Um, and so actually, I should really be talking about this in terms of thinking about going a little bit that way and a little bit that way. I, I, gotta, I gotta back up here and we're gonna edit this stuff out and, and simplify things here. Okay, so let me back up a little bit. This is gonna be a miracle if this ever gets edited to a video that actually makes sense for anybody. Okay, so if I have this exponential graph where at the value of x is equal to time squared, the way that I can understand how x changes according to 
um, how to, according to how time changes, is by looking at, well, let me, what if I went a little bit over this way, and I went a little bit over this way, and I said, okay, well, here's a point here, and then here's a point here, and now I draw this line. You can kind of see that this line is describing, in a way, what, you know, what the change is right at this point as I move a little bit ahead in time or a little bit behind in time. How does, how does that distance change? Well, in essence, this is called the tangent to the curve. Right? If I were to take these points and make them successively smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and this is kind of a part of calculus, is, you know, well, what if we think about this in terms of like infinitesimally small things? I'm going to get a line that is tangent to this curve. And the slope of that line describes how the distance changes as you move a little bit ahead in time or a little bit behind in time at that moment. And so in this case, the way this we can see here, like, okay, well, uh, uh, let me actually write this out. So the change in x over time is actually 2 times t for this particular graph, right? The slope of this line is 2, then it's 4, then it's 6, then it's 8, then it's 10, then it's 12, right? That's the slope of the line. And in fact, this is, I forget what this rule is called, but in order to, if you have any graph, if you have any function, sorry, you can take the derivative of that function by looking at the expon exponent, subtract, subtracting 1 from it, and then taking that exponent and multiplying it. So if I have this function, you know, uh, y equals 4x to the third power, the derivative is 4 times 3x to the second power, or 12x squared. Somebody fact check me on this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, did I get that right? Power rule. Thank you, chat. That was Yo Zink. Y O Z Y N K. And C in the chat tells me that this is known as the power rule. So, this is the first piece of the puzzle we need. We need to understand that calculus allows us to look at how a given variable changes according to another variable. And if we have a function that describes the relationship between those two variables, we can look at that derivative uh, and calculate that derivative uh, in generalities using the power rule. That's step one. Any questions? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pause here and in the next video, I'm going to look at the chain rule and partial derivatives, which we're also going to need um, in the gradient descent problem. Uh, uh, did I make it? Okay, so, oh, I'm over here now. All right, so, uh, <laughs> I know, that was, there's something else going on in the chat that I'm not following. Why talking about calculus? Why talking about calculus, uh, magic recess, when the topic title is linear regression? Well, because I'm attempting to do linear regression with gradient descent, and I was going to try to derive the formula for adjusting the weights in gradient descent, and you kind of need calculus for that. But I'm, I'm kind of regretting it. OK. Um, Okay, so uh, that seemed to be, uh, I'm not seeing any major complaints in the chat. I guess I'm gonna keep this video. I'm gonna move on now and uh, I'm gonna like skip over like a universe of information and talk about um, uh, a chain rule. Boy, do I even know what the chain rule is? So the chain rule, okay, okay, I know what the chain rule is. Oh, and I need some partial derivatives, okay. Okay, <laughs> Ori says I didn't understand anything. Oh, I'm sorry, Ori. I'm sorry. <laughs> that makes me very sad. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm looking at the chat still. Okay. Uh, this is, you know, one thing that I, one thing with my uh, other videos is that I always, um, like, typically I, if when I'm making a video tutorial, I mean, coding challenges aside, typically what I do is I've kind of like used some material that I've taught in a classroom setting like a bunch of times. 
And what that involves is, number one, preparing for class. I don't really prepare for these videos. <laughs> uh, number two, it involves kind of like botching it and then getting feedback and kind of doing it again. And then by the time I get up here to make a video, I'm sort of more in the frame of mind of knowing what I want to accomplish. But anyway, this is, it is what it is. Okay, so I am now going to, um, there's uh, the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back and, okay. <laughs> okay, welcome back. I can't believe that you're, if you're here watching this, but um, so, you know, I kind of in the last video, eh, it wasn't my best work, but I, I discussed a bit about kind of calculus and what a derivative is. Some people might have helped, that might have helped some people, might not have helped other people. I will also, I think, include in these videos links to additional resources that might be better than mine. But, um, um, what I, the, so, you know, I'm skipping over a universe of information here and stuff that we could do and kind of jumping right into some other arbitrary piece. But um, what I established in the previous video, and let me use this eraser here, is that I have, we have something called the power rule. Um, the power rule says that if I have a function f of x equals something like x to the third power plus 4x squared plus 3x plus 2, I can get the derivative of this function with the power rule. So the power rule says that I take the exponent, multiply it, and then subtract 1 to the exponent. So I have 3x squared plus 8x plus, in this case, 1, subtract 1, I get 0, and then multiply 1 by 3, 3, and then this, I get uh, nothing. I get 0. So I just get rid of the constant. So this would be the derivative of this particular function using the power rule. Power rule. There are two, so this is part of what we need for the gradient descent algorithm that I'm going to get to, again, in a couple of videos. But there are two other rules that we need. And in this video, I don't know which order to talk about them in. I think in this video, I will talk about um, the chain rule. Because I'm picking the one that I'm much less comfortable with. So the chain rule involves, uh, and both chain rule and uh, partial derivatives, involve systems with multiple variables. So in this case, this function has a single variable. So what if I said to you, f of x equals 4x squared, but, um, wait, wait, hold on, time out. So if I want to do the chain rule, what I want to say is, somebody, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I want to have another function that depends on this function. Right? Hold on a sec. There's a nice explanation of it in, let me just see what example. <laughs> um, I'm gonna look in, in here for a second. Uh, this is uh, Tariq Rashid's book that has a nice little appendix about calculus. I'm pretty sure it had a chain rule example. Right, why, oh, okay. Um, so if I have one function uh, equals, and then if I were to say, um, this doesn't make sense to me. Oh, yeah, 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 I see. I'm kind of doing this. What if I then said, okay, because I could say like this. If I said y equals 4x squared and I said like x equals something like z to the third power plus you know, z or something like that. So that, um, oh, I'm looking. And the <laughs> I keep up the <laughs> good with you in the edited version. Okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, let me come back to this. <laughs> uh, D of f. So hold on, I'm gonna, let me, let me see if I can get, let me see if I can map this out, then I'm gonna like erase it and, and, and do it as if I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so what I, what say I want now to say, 
how does uh, how does y change relative to z? Right. This is what I would use the chain rule for, and I would say uh, y changes relative to z um, is uh, the change in y relative to the change in x times the change in x relative to the change in z. Is this correct? I think this is the chain rule. Um, OK, so I'm pretty sure somebody uh, fact check me. I'm going to erase this and do it again. I think this is the chain rule. The question is, is my notation kind of awkward here? Should I have notated this in a different way? Like, should I? Um, but I think this is fine. OK, yes, correct. OK, thank you, everybody. Looks good. OK, so where's my eraser? <laughs> OK. Whew. OK. I can't remember what I wrote here. Maybe I did something. Did I have this to start? I can't remember. OK. I, maybe I'll just go back. So, OK. So let's say I have a function y equals 4x squared. Now, I know that the change in y relative to the change in x, the derivative of this function is 8x. That is the power rule. But what if this function actually depends on another function? Like, what if I had a function that says x equals uh, y to the third power plus uh, 2y? Oh, no, no, not y. Sorry. Ah. Another variable. I don't know what I'm doing here. What if x is dependent on another variable? Right? Plus, so x is dependent on z. x equals z to the third power plus 2 times z. Well, according to the, cha according to the power rule, the change in x relative to the change in z is 3z squared. 3z squared plus 2. And this is also the power rule. But what if I wanted to ask, how does y change relative to z? Right? y is dependent on x, but x is dependent on z. Now, I could just like plug z in here and work out all the math, I think. But I can also use something called the chain rule. The chain rule states that with a function that depends on another function, I can, I can separate this out into two different parts. I can say dy over dz equals the change in y relative to um, uh, x times the change in x relative to the change in z. Pause. Did I get that right? <laughs> Is that right? Is that what I had before? Uh, is this for 10-year-olds? <laughs> oh, God. I do have a viewer in the Netherlands who is a 7-year-old boy who's done amazing things. I hope that, I don't know if this is going to be at all helpful. Um, and it's done some wonderful stuff. I've been amazed. Um, uh, it's beyond me in coding already, I think. Um, did I get this right? I need another fact check. Yes, OK. And you, can, and you can see how this could kind of works out, because you can almost like cancel those out, and you have dy over dz. So if I were just to follow this along, I now have uh, 8x times 3z squared plus 2, which would now give me 8xz squared plus uh, 16x, if I did the math there correctly. So this would be the chain rule, which would give me the derivative of the, the dy, the derivative of y relative to z, is that, is that the right way to describe it? Um, uh, if y depends on x and x depends on z. So this is the chain rule. Okay, 
So now we've got what is a derivative with the power rule. We've got what if I have one function that depends on another function, um, that this depends on another function. I can do a derivative with the chain rule. I'm setting up things that we need. And there's one more thing that I need to talk about, which is what is a partial derivative. And once I talk about what a partial derivative is, then we can go back to the gradient descent math and work out and derive that exact formula that I used in that previous video, which seems like a lifetime ago. Okay, next video will be partial derivative. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the comment, which is that this is much smoother than your derivative explanation, which is interesting because I think I felt this need with the derivative explanation to kind of somehow summarize all that is, is calculus in one video. And I, I became overwhelmed by that and I kind of messed it up. Um, I'm just seeing if anybody wants to, uh, is, I'm just reading the chat to make sure there's no like wildly, um, wild, what, anything that I've done like way off base, but so far, and it's 4.30, I don't have a lot of time left. <sighs> so let's see if I can do this partial derivative thing. This is what I felt, okay. So, um, okay. So let me, uh, let's erase some of this. Where's that eraser? Okay. So, if y is a function of x and x is a function of z, I just want to state the chain rule. Then um, dy dz equals dy dx times dx dz. Is this the correct way to state the chain rule? Okay, the power rule. Power rule states that y equals some constant times x to the n dy dx. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, uh, it, uh, e equals C times N times X to the N minus 1. Is this a good way to, to write it? Power rule. I don't like my notation. First of all, I think I want to use asterisk since that's sort of like the coding way. I need to put one here. Any corrections to this? Because I'm going to add partial derivative. <laughs> Next. Partially out of frame. Thank you. Why? I think you know what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to say, should I do it? What if I just say x to the n? Then I could say n times x to the n minus 1. And that should be in the frame, yes? How am I doing? Uh, okay, I'm looking, write f of x, not y. And then say df here, is that better? I've also seen write this, can't you write this, right? 
which also indicates derivative. Use a, use f, okay. Yeah. All right, maybe at the chain rule, not always using f, f, x, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, it's better to have two names for the functions. Yeah, maybe a, so in other words, my notation is kind of bad here because it's not consistent. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's like a, I'm taking the chat very seriously. And everybody has a completely different, uh, everybody has a completely different um, approach. I think, I think I better be consistent here. And you know what? I'm going to use, even though I, I feel like this is a little bit less mathematical notation. So um, I'm going to stick to this. Um, this is, it's a little bit awkward what I wrote here, right? Is this really, is, oops, oh, you can't see me. I'm in the wrong frame. This is the thing that I'm, this is what I'm worried about being most problematic. The way that I wrote this here. Is this something that a mathematician would never write it this way? That's my question. Uh, X, oh, x equals g of z. Ah, uh, that makes sense, yeah. Right, a different function. That's a good point. Okay, thank you. Okay, here we go. Oh, boy. Okay, thank you, everybody. Okay. Hi, so I don't know, by some miracle, I, attempt, I made a video where I attempted to describe something about a derivative. I think that one wasn't that great. Then I did another video, which actually felt a little bit better, but uh, um, about the chain rule. So I've kind of summarized how the power rule is a way to take a function and compute the derivative by taking the exponent, multiplying it, and subtracting one by the exponent. The chain rule is a way to say if y depends on x and x depends on z, I can look at the relationship between y and z by chaining the two derivatives of this function and this function. So those are the two pieces that I've done so far. The last piece that I need for the gradient descent algorithm is something called a partial derivative. Now I think this is actually going to be somewhat easier to do, to explain, and then you know hopefully it'll all make sense when we come back and look at the derivation of the linear regression with gradient descent formula. But let's say, what if, you know, in, in many cases you have a function with multiple variables. So I could say I have a function f of x and y. And it equals, you know, 3x squared plus 2xy plus y to the third power plus um, you know, I don't know, 9x uh, squared y. So this is some crazy function that I wrote. I don't know what the use point of it is. But what if what I want to do is look at, and let's say this is uh, z. z is a function of x and y. And what I, what I want to do, and by the way, there's, I, I've been struggling with this. You know, if I have a function like f of x, equals x squared. I can, another notation that you might see is this f uh, tick x. I don't know what the technical term for this is, but this is another way of writing the derivative of the function f is 2x. So, but I could also say, like what I've done here with y, I could say the derivative of the function is dy over dx. And in this case, the reason why this is important is because what if I want to look at how z changes only relative to x or only relative to y. This is what's known as a partial derivative. And the notation is written instead of, um, I'm going to just do this over here, right? This would be kind of the regular way of writing a I don't know, full derivative. It's not partial. dy over dx. 
A partial derivative is written with a D, but in a slightly different style like this. I, I don't know where this notation comes from. Maybe somebody in the chat can tell me and then I can say it in a second or put a link to it. But if I want to know how Z changes relative to X only, that's a partial derivative or how Z changes relative to Y only. Um, okay, I'm pausing for a second. How am I doing? Um, oh, are people, people are freaking out in the chat? Yeah, out of frame. I got to fix that. Um, so, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the chat because I haven't been able to follow it. But if you're watching this and you're kind of like, ugh, do I need to know this? Or this is annoying or I'm confused. Uh, first, let me say, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying my best here. This is an experiment to see if it makes sense to even cover this stuff. And this is not something, again, that I have a deep knowledge of. And I, I also I need to um, get this back into the frame here. But, um, um, but I will say is that you don't actually need to do all of this math yourself if ultimately what you're going to do is use a machine learning library like, say, TensorFlow to train and calculate all the weights of a model. And uh, in essence, I would say that, you know, I would probably say that when I frame the whole uh, set of videos that I'm gonna make, these are videos that you could skip. But this will give you a background into how the math works, which might gives you, give you a sense of some of the terminology, language, ideas that might be in various papers and blog posts and books and things that you might read as you're learning and exploring this material. So uh, don't worry, everybody calm down, uh, keep calm and carry on, so to speak. Um, but um, I'm gonna keep going with this because I'm just about done. Okay, so uh, first thing that I need to do is, um, uh, um, first thing I need to do is get this more into frame. So here, I'm gonna come back. Thank you, Mathieu. This is gonna be so much more work than usual. Um, okay, so, sorry, I've, I've, I kind of drew this out of frame. So let me, uh, let me draw this a bit smaller. So partial derivative of z uh, relative to x, partial derivative, am I in the frame? I can't really see, of z uh, relative to y. Did I keep that in the frame? I think I did. Okay, so how do we do this? The way that we do this, this partial derivative, is calculated with the power rule. The same exact way that you would do normally and with treating y simply as a constant. So whatever you would do to a constant, you would do, you would, uh, you would do it in the exact same way. So what do I mean by that? So this would now equal this partial derivative would be, so this, like, this, this little section I can do just with the regular power rule. So two times three is six. So six x, two minus one is one. Six x plus, now this is tricky. So two x y, well, I want the derivative relative to x. Another way of writing this is two y x. Now think about this, if I had five x, the derivative of five x would just be five. In this case, two times y is a constant. I want to treat as a constant. So the derivative of two y x, or two x y, is just two y. So six x plus two y plus, now here's a tricky one, y cubed. You think, oh, well, it's a constant, so it stays as y cubed, but it's not. What if I have just a, a value like, I don't have this anymore, like five, um, the derivative of that would be zero. So this, goes away, and then this is the same thing. This is now the equivalent of nine times y times x squared. So that is two times nine, 18 times uh, 18 times eight, 18 y x, right? Because it's, right, if I just had a, a constant nine x squared, I would have 18 x. So nine y x squared is 18 times y, X. So this is now the partial derivative relative to x. I treat y as if it's a constant, and I have this as the derivative. Now, as an exercise, I might say, stop watching this video, pause this video, and try to do the partial derivative 
of z relative to y. Now, I have no room here on the whiteboard to do it because I've done a terrible job of organizing myself. So I will just put the answer to that in the video's description <laughs> and you can check it because this is the end. So now we have the pieces. I know that I've skipped a million details. This isn't really a proper, and this isn't a proper anything, frankly, but this isn't a proper calculus lesson. I don't even know what I'm talking about half the time in these videos, but I'm trying to set the stage for at least the terminology and the pieces of the puzzle. So when I get into the next video, I'm gonna go back to gradient descent, this thing where I calculated the error and then nudged the slope or the y-intercept of this formula for a line according to that error. Well, how, why is it that I did it that way? I'm going to show you why using the power rule, the chain rule, and partial derivatives. So hopefully this will give you some background for that. I'm going to do that in the next video. You know, you, don't, you could just go do something else. I highly, um, but um, that's what I'm going to do. So uh, let me know your answer to the partial derivative here, and then I will see you maybe in the next video. Goodbye! Uh, okay, um, did I, by the way, so first of all, uh, is that all this legible? It is. Did I, um, oh, it's prime, not tick. So this is not tick, this is prime. Why is it prime? So I got to correct that. <laughs> I'm going to get flamed. We're going to insert this. We're going to do a little insertion. So the chat is telling me that the proper term is not tick for this, but it's uh, F prime. Sorry about that. There'll be a little flip that'll get edited in. Um, OK, uh, F dash. Uh, OK, oops, this camera went off. I probably should leave, I really, I th I, yeah, I, I, I get making these videos, but you know, for me, the thing that I'm really interested in is the application of stuff and some creative projects, um, but F dash, yeah, dub the word over, uh, F prime. Okay, um, uh, okay, so let me see here. I don't think I have time for the next piece. I do have 15 minutes before I really have to go. Question is, could I do this in 15 minutes? Um, let me think about this. Because um, it really would be nice to finish this off today. And I don't want to come back to it for sure. Okay, let me try. So what I need to do now, oh, oh my God. So this is horrible. I really got myself into a situation. This is correct, by the way. So if this was wrong, I'm in big trouble. So hopefully somebody tell me this is right, or if it was wrong, somebody would tell me. So I've gotten myself into a situation where what I need to do now is show the formula for calculating the error based on the weights, and then look at how the derivative shows us which way to go to change the, oh, did I really get myself into the situation where this is what I'm teaching? <laughs> this is a good exercise for me. I should understand and learn this stuff if I'm gonna, mostly I'm doing this because I wanna understand and try to learn this stuff so that I feel like I have a bit more background in it if I'm just kind of like hacking together some TensorFlow stuff. But um, do I have time to do this today? Or should I come back on Tuesday? leave this as is, maybe come back fresh. I think I might need to come back fresh. Um, uh, I'm seeing, uh, yeah, F dash, F dash, DZ DX is correct. Thank you, I got lucky. I did study this stuff, at, well, I did take multivariable calculus. That would be right now, um, let's see, when would I have taken that? Carry the one, 23 or 24 years ago, something like that. You know, then I wasted a lot of time in New York City with odd jobs and ends, and then I went to ITP and I sort of learned about programming. And then like a week ago I thought, well, let me read about all that multivariable calculus stuff that's in gradient descent again, because maybe that's useful. Uh, okay, um, all right. Um, okay, so I think, 
I think I probably, I, I think I shouldn't rush this and try to like do the next thing in 10 minutes because it's just gonna be a fail. Um, I, I'm hoping that maybe I can actually just come and complete this on Tuesday. You know, now that it's summer, I, I, I strangely enough have the flexibility to record much more often. And I, I feel like I need this to be completed. Because then, once I'm done with this, I can do the perceptron, I can do the neural network, and I don't have to go back and explain gradient descent. I can just use it, and if anybody wants to, they could go and watch these other videos. Um, is it not called multivariable calculus anymore? <laughs> uh, I am 43. I might as well, people ask that a lot in the chat, but um, I might as well. You can find it online pretty easily. I think I have a Wikipedia page, by the way. Let's take a look. Somebody made one as like a class assignment at some other school. Maybe you guys watching, I can't, how many people are watching this right now? This has got to be like, 381 people are still watching this? That's got to be a mistake. You know, the camera in this room, I have like a soft light, it makes me look much younger. Uh, yeah, see the Wikipedia page actually has, look, it even has my birthday on it. Um, but uh, I don't know, internet, there's 381 people watching. Maybe you could add something, freshen up this page for me. That would be nice. Oh, it could be like a picture on it, some like inside coding train humor somehow that's an Easter egg. See if you can do that. I do act, acting like I'm 25 is very generous. Thank you, uh, Guma, in the chat. Um, okay. Um, all right, so um, thank you all for watching this today. So let's recap. What do I have so far that I've done new this week? Really just linear regression, linear regression, linear regression. So I did a, there's how many, how many edited videos are going to come out soon? What is linear regression? Linear regression with ordinary least squares. Linear regression with uh, gradient descent. Oh, I know what I could do in 10 minutes. I know what I could do in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, people are really talking about my age and I shouldn't have said anything too much. Um, maybe, I, maybe I'm actually wrong about my age. It's a state of mind, man, yeah. Um, maybe what I should do is, do I dare, dare? No, no, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna do this stuff next. I'm going to answer some questions. I also wanted to use this library, uh, which will do the um, uh, regression for you. And I wanted to go through this library and show you how this works. Um, I will do this. Um, yeah, so uh, in the chat, uh, Kay Weekman is asking, your Wikipedia page says you studied philosophy. Has that about, had been a help in your further studies? Well, interestingly enough, uh, I did study philosophy and the Focus. I mean, first of all, I didn't really pay attention. It didn't really make good use of my undergraduate education. Uh, I would say um, I regret. I, uh, you take it's a it's a wonderful luxury to uh, uh, and uh, a wonderful thing education. So <laughs> anyway, but that that aside, uh, the thing that I focused on was uh, logic, um, paradoxes, um, and so I think that a lot of the sort of Boolean logic set theoretical paradox kind of like stuff that I was studying, and this was a long time ago, um, unbeknownst to me at the time, became incredibly useful as a way of thinking as applied to coding. So coding, I think, is a, um, a learning to program, uh, learning to think through a problem um, in a logical way, I think definitely relates to a lot of the stuff that I learned about and studied in terms of philosophy, but I never really made that connection. Um, Okay, I am watching this, Sasha, I'm watching this even after two whiskeys and three beers. I should go, maybe a beer is in the cards for me this evening to celebrate the end of a week. The weekend is coming up. Um, two whiskeys and three beers, you would have to hospitalize me, I think, <laughs> if that happened, but uh, um, yeah. Okay, can I teach C sharp? Can I te teach Arduino? Um, uh, I do, I, I'm not an expert, or uh, which, by the way, clearly has not stopped me from trying to teach anything. Not knowing it is kind of the uh, is the criteria for me attempting to teach it, apparently. But uh, C sharp and Arduino are not things that I'm looking at doing anytime soon. But I do want to get back to having more guest tutorials. 
So I would like to have more physical computing related guest tutorials, uh, tutorials maybe using things like Unity, which I know uh, C Sharp is a part of. Um, so uh, those things are, and, and I think I need to, it's on my to-do list, but to schedule, is it June yet? I was kind of hoping that June would be the month of guest tutorials, so I need to start scheduling people to come in and do guest tutorials. Um, I pronounce, uh, okay. Um, all right, I'm looking at these questions. I'm gonna play my Goodbye Rainbow song. So I'm gonna be off. Uh, this has been a two hour and five minute live stream. I have never tried, Ariel asked, have you ever tried the Elm programming language? I have not. I don't even know what that is. Um, Cigar says, smiley emoji, smiley emoji, smiley emoji, smiley emoji. Um, oh. Uh, I pro no, I don't. This chat. I have the chat on this monitor to the side in like a really big font, so I can read it from far away. Scrolls by and this like mo most almost all of the questions. Um, how about uh, uh, Python? I, I do want to do actually. I kind of I kind of want to do some intro to Python tutorials because I don't really know Python. I hack away at it sometimes when I need to get a Python script working. And I thought I would try to do once I get. I have this idea that once I get to, um, in my list here, week five, CNN TensorFlow. So I'm gonna do all the neural network stuff without Python and then I'm gonna use TensorFlow. Um, and I'm gonna use TensorFlow with Python. I was thinking of like a series of like teach myself to program in Python. So um, I might do sort of like a few basic Python tutorials. Uh, ah, would love to do shaders. I'd love to get a guest to do shaders. I didn't use multiple colors. That's why today didn't go well. H I, um, I do have HTML job. Jarakubos14 asks, um, no juice says delay test, respond to this ASAP. That's as best I can respond to it. Um, do an HTML tutorial. I have a whole playlist uh, of kind of like what is HTML and some basic tutorials about HTML in the context of using the P5JS um, DOM library. <laughs> yes, I can juggle. Could also play the piano a little bit and I was thinking maybe I should write a few like parody computer science programming songs and come in and play a few for you. I've been learning some Nick Cave. Nick Cave is playing tonight at the King's Theater in Brooklyn. I, I'm not going, but I bought some tickets uh, as a gift for somebody else. I'm excited, excited for that Nick Cave. Nick Cave is also playing at the Beacon Theater on the Upper West Side. I'm a Nick Cave fan, but I don't like concerts. It's too loud, too crowded. Um, okay. Um, so thanks everybody for tuning in. I, I don't know if, I hope this isn't too much of a digression, uh, kind of going off on this linear regression stuff. Um, and, uh, and uh, can a 13-year-old learn coding? Of course a 13-year-old can learn coding. A 10-year-old can learn coding. An 8-year-old can learn coding. A 5-year-old can learn coding concepts and talk about coding. Now, I, I, do, I do think that for children, experiencing the physical world, experiencing learning how to be part of a community and be with people, these are sort of like the primary things to learn and experience as in the development of a child. This is a non-scientific, this is, you know, <laughs> uh, but so I do question in terms of all of this, like learn to code and, you know, code with Elsa and Anna and code with Star Wars and you're four years old and playing your code on your iPad app. You know, I, I, I don't have anything necessarily against that, so to speak, but I do think that a lot, I, one, one thing I'm excited about sort of offline collaborative activities that teach uh, kids' ways of thinking uh, of code is sort of a kind of thing that I'm interested in. But certainly, I do think for a 13-year-old at that age, um, you know, using something like Scratch, um, even something like P5JS and JavaScript, these are platforms that absolutely can be uh, productive for programming. Ah, Mika Erickson in the chat. And I have the same birthday. Wonderful. Okay, I'm out in about 20 seconds. I'm sorry that um, this is, I, I know people are really excited about the TensorFlow stuff and the neural network stuff. I am gonna get to it. I wish I was getting to it faster. Maybe it was a mistake to have all this lead up to it, but it's what I'm attempting and trying to do, so that's what it is. 
Okay. Um, by the way, I didn't really even start coding until I was like 28 or something. <laughs> so uh, I don't remember the exact age, but I'll have to look it up. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Um, if you're interested in supporting the work that I do, you are welcome to join the Slack community, patreon.com slash coding train. Um, you can also uh, buy some merchandise at codingtrain.storeenvy.com. Somebody asked if they could donate with Bitcoin, and I'm looking into seeing if I can make that possible for people. Um, and uh, I have a Coinbase account, but I don't have a merchant account. I couldn't really figure out how to do it. If anyone wants to help me with that, please let me know. Uh, what else do I want to say? Uh, like, subscribe, uh, at Shiftman on Twitter. Um, feedback, constructive criticism, all of that is welcome. I hope you're enjoying everything, and um, I don't know for sure. I'm definitely coming back next week on Thursday or Friday. I'm, I'm not free on Monday, and I'm not free on Wednesday. If I have time to just come back for a short bit, I really want to get through this linear, finish off this regression stuff. If I can do that on Tuesday, I will. So just stay tuned, at Schiffman on Twitter. Uh, if you subscribe, here's one thing you can do. If you want an alert whenever I'm live, uh, if you subscribe on YouTube and then click this alarm bell, it will, uh, you'll get an alert. So I suggest doing that and um, sometimes, um, yeah. So that's, that's about it. Okay, thanks everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Uh, be with your family and, love and friends and loved ones. Uh, give somebody a hug. Um, and um, see you in the next train. I'm, I'm going to take the train. Oh, where's my, I, it's time. I don't know if you know this, but I actually have some toy trains in, in the studio. So here we go. <coughs> Goodbye. <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm leaving. <coughs> Do the awkward thing is the button for me to stop the YouTube stream is over here. <laughs> so now I have to come back. By the way, look at this. Whoa, what is this strange invisible laptop? Look at this. It is a strange magical laptop that is invisible. It's actually just a laptop with Green paper. This is where I cheat. This is where I have all my secret code on it. No, I just have the Slack chat on here. But a lot of people write, I can see you looking to the side. You're, you're just typing your code from the other thing. Which, first of all, I don't think that would be cheating. That would be just being prepared and going through a lesson that I previously prepared. That would be a good thing. Okay. I don't know. People want some green screen stuff that they can do some weird things with. No, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I gotta go. I gotta go. Uh, see you guys. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you in the future.